Now joining me to discuss this development is Country Director, Global Peace Foundation Nigeria, and the former chairman, Kan Kaduna State, that's Reverend Joseph John Hayub. Thank you for your time. Uh, let's start off with this. Now, Reverend, as a religious leader yourself, what are your thoughts on Sheikh Gumi's offer to engage in dialogue with bandits responsible for the recent you know, abductions? I think uh, Gumi is assuming that we have forgotten, but some of us have not forgotten, that when people were kidnapped on the train attack, a very close associate of Gumi, I can even say his right-hand man, came out to say he is the one or he is dialoguing on behalf with the bandits. At the end, it ended up in crisis, it ended up in a shameful thing. Because we are in Nigeria, the story is no longer coming out, but up to today, you know, the matter has not ended. Because he was arrested by Interpol in Egypt, brought back to Nigeria, things were found in his house. What he called negotiation was turns out to be like a business. So when people claim or when people say that they want to negotiate on behalf of government, they should first of all be sure that they are honest and transparent in what is happening. I've been around for some years. I was also involved in the previous uh, effort to get people who were kidnapped either by the train, on the train, or students. And so I know a little about some of these stories. And I want to beg with me that it is too early for us to start talking about this. We have criminals tormenting fellow Nigerians. We have people who have no regard for government and constituted authority. Tell me, what is the crime of innocent children that you will go and adopt them? What have they done? If government have not done you well, is it the parents of these children or these children that have not done you well that you will go and take them to the bush and punish them? We know how much as Baptist Church and the Christian community in Kaduna State we pay to get our 121 children that were adopted in the Bethel Baptist High School. We paid over 250 million. And I also know the rules, some of these funny negotiators play. So it is not right for people to start saying this. If you want to connect with uh, Tinebu, just say, Tinebu, I want to see you. I also want to be one of those who come around. But don't hide under this kind of unfortunate incident and say that uh, we should negotiate. What exactly is the grievances of this bandit? What have we done to them? What have the Nigerian community done to them that they are angry? So that we can apologize and talk about it. We don't even know what they are doing. So what negotiation are we? You went to the book several times and came back. What do we really have about the conversations surrounding your subject? I do understand these things, but I'm not comfortable knowing what happened some years ago, and I don't want us to go back. Uh, I want to see the current administration stamping our ground. Okay, so, so, so what do you suggest that uh, religious leaders, what role do you suggest they can play in promoting peace and actually resolving conflicts of this manner, you know, uh, in the country? Yeah, that's where I'm coming to. But let me just quickly respond to your question. As religious leaders, we have a responsibility to, number one, remind followers to know that service to God is service to nation. If you serve your nation, you are serving God. If you are patriotic to your nation, you are, you are doing it because of God. So people shouldn't think that because this is Nigeria, so they can destroy Nigeria and then claim to be serving God. You cannot serve God by destroying your country. In the Bible, the Bible tells us that every person is subject to governing authority because God constitutes the governing authority to regulate and ensure things are, work, are done in order. So when people become terrorists, when people terrorize Nigerians, destroy police stations, kill and maim soldiers, and they say they are serving God, I have a lot of concern about that. So religious leaders have a responsibility to tell people who are doing wrong but hiding under religion that what they are doing is a disservice to their faith. The fact of all is that they are giving their religion a bad name. That is one thing. As religious leaders, we must continue this preaching. We must also engage with other faiths to see that the voice is in unison. It's not just one side. We are not coming to debate these verses. We are talking about Nigeria. We are coming to say, look, as religious leaders, whether you are Christian, or Muslim, whether you are Hindu or Buddhist, whatever religion you belong, you have a responsibility to ensure that Nigerian is peaceful, Nigerian is safe. If you terrorize Nigerian, if you cause Nigerian pain, you are not doing good. That's one role religious leaders can play. They cannot mm. even come out publicly. Like when Gumi started it, he did say, and I quote, that his aim to go to them was to preach to them Islam. And I think that should be what we should do. Remind them that you are hiding under faith, but you are causing people pain. Our religion does not teach that. You are not doing it right. If we do it, 
Then people who do that, we cannot come and be defending them or protecting them and telling government to be careful how she deals with them. No. An enemy of the state should be dealt with by the authority and the powers that be in Nigeria. And not only by that. You see, we have a constitution. The responsibility of securing lives and properties in this country is shouldered on government. So if anybody comes to derise Nigerians, to make things difficult for Nigerians, as a Fed leader, my job is to remind government to remember what the constitution or the powers that they have under the constitution. They should not compromise it because that is why they are there. If they okay. cannot do it, then let them resign. All right. Uh, just before I let you go, given the escalating insecurity in the country, do you think there is a need for more concerted efforts? Uh, from religious leaders to address uh, these particular issues, particularly from the grassroots? Honestly speaking, there are religious leaders who are doing their best and putting their best to make sure that there is peace in Nigeria, there is progress in Nigeria. I remember very well the particular day that these young people uh, came, this uh, group came uh, went and kidnapped this student. A group called Interfaith Dialogue Forum for Peace. We are in Kaduna. A group of over 120 religious leaders, the fact that we were almost 500 in that world, talking about how we can tackle poverty and tackle insecurity as our collective responsibility. Unfortunately, as we were discussing that, enemies were in the bush terrorizing our innocent children. So there are efforts going on out there. But you see, Nigerian is big, Nigerian is white. That small effort is not enough. We need to intensify. We need to continue to go to places. We need to remind people in the rural area that, look, nobody should come here and tell you he loves you when he's raising Nigeria. Nobody should come here and say he's defending you when he's causing Nigerian pains. Whether he's a politician, whether he's a bandit or call him whatever, a religious leader, anybody whose purpose of coming close to you is to cause Nigerian pain, do not love you. If to destroy Nigeria, is do not love you. So we need to continue that because when more people become inform and all people of different shades and opinion unite then we can deal with this criminality this criminality is growing strong in nigeria simply for one reason before they started they softly divided us they divided us along the religious line divided us along ethnic line divided us along original line and then when we were divided then they started operating that's why we find it difficult to unite to chase them away instead we accuse each other spite each other when they are destroying all of us. So we must close ranks and unite and never show that we are sympathetic to one group or trying to be nice to one group. A criminal is a criminal, an enemy of a country is an enemy of a country. Whether he goes to church or go to mosque, we must not shield him. All right. Uh, thank you for your time on the news. Thank you for having me. All right. At this point, we'll go on a quick break. When we return, we have more stories. Stay with us.